Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Okay, then welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas, day three as we wind down. Three days of, of deep coverage, two sets, a lot of content flowing on siliconangle.com, thecube.net. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Day three, still got a lot of action to it. Rick, Rich, Steve, Senior Director, Worldwide Partner Programs. <laughs> welcome <laughs> to theCUBE. We were just talking about people calling you Rick. Uh, I said it, Rich. It's going to happen. Rich, <laughs> welcome to theCUBE. Good Thank to you. see you. It's been a uh, really honor to be on with you guys. Worldwide Partner Programs. Obviously, VMware is hot, revenue's up. Pat Gelsinger was on yesterday. That's right. You know, everything's going up and to the right. A lot of things that the bets that VMware made paying off, still great customer base. That's growing, right. cloudified multiple partnerships, so you guys are in a good market position. Clearly. Now with the Dell Technologies integration, you got touch points with Azure, um, VCF, the VMware Cloud Foundation. That's right. You have a foundational bedrock now to integrate into multiple environments. Really puts the software-defined data center in play for everybody. That's correct. Now you're bringing it out to the partners for money-making opportunities where they can deliver value. Exactly. And get paid for it, make a lot of profit. Win, win, win. This is, this is the equation of partnering. Correct. What's, where are you guys at right now? Again, a lot of now partnering, you do joint programs, so it seems complex to me. Break it down for us. Yeah, well clearly we're at a great moment right now where the portfolio is coming together, the market opportunity is coming together, um, and we're really looking to help drive a change in the vision and the way that we partner uh, together in the marketplace to win uh, together with our customers. You know, we feel like our responsibility is if we're going to have the opportunity to win the business with our partners for the foreseeable future and to become that essential, ubiquitous, digital platform to help drive innovation uh, together with our partners for our customers during their digital transformation, we fundamentally have to change the way that we look at the business and the way that we engage in the marketplace. We have to make it radically simple. Um, simple to engage, drive profitability, and drive growth. Um, and, and spend less time focused on maybe some of the traditional uh, motions that have been um, you know, aligned in the channel programs of the past around traditional routes to market or silos uh, of complexity within, within the program. Like what, what's an example of, of old versus new? Give us. Yeah, you know, I think uh, you know, I've had the opportunity to uh, lead and drive some of the changes and transformations, some of the larger uh, vendor programs in the marketplace. And I think there are some uh, pitfalls and traps we've all fell into in the past. And a lot of that has come into um, really siloing our partners based on um, traditional routes to market. Here's the VAR program, here's the distributor program, here's the OEM program. But what we're seeing in this cloud, hybrid cloud, mobile first world, is that our partners are delivering value across the spectrum. And yet, many vendors are continuing to look at their partners as individual segments and silos. We've got to do better, right? And that's really the business proposition uh, in some of the exciting announcements well, we've Well, I would recently. just add, just from a complexity standpoint, because of data and AI and now scalable infrastructure, you now have every vertical industry with specialty capabilities apps. So, right. in a way, you got your service area for partnering is increased. So, Absolutely. not only do you have to simplify the programs, that's right. you've got a bigger landscape to take territory on. Clearly, you know, as we look at building on uh, the foundation that we've built through the compute layer and vSphere and the ecosystem of incredibly valuable partnerships that we've built, as we take that across and you know, hyper focus on accelerating the cloud journey, but also transforming networking and security, or also in, you know, empowering digital workspace, we've got to look at that broad base of, of partners um, and how they're delivering value to their customers. So overall. what is the segmentation yeah. if it's not you know, by the old traditional buckets? What's, what's the, what are the new Buckets or seams, really? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. I think we're, we're coming to uh, the market with a, a simpler proposition that says, we want to offer our partners greater flexibility and choice to choose the business model that makes sense for how they want to go to market to solve their customers' most pressing IT needs and priorities. So, whether I'm a, a reseller or a cloud service provider or an OEM, I want to have one engagement model, a consistent experience as I engage with VMware, and I want you to recognize the total value I'm bringing to the customer relationship rather than the individual piece part. So one agreement, any business model, one single program. So it's more, take some friction out of the complexity, make it simpler. What about specific programs? What are you guys launching? What is yeah. the, some of the news that you're rolling out to get these guys up and running quickly? Yeah, we're really excited. We 
we've had the opportunity over the last few weeks to um, change what has been in the past, the tradition of over a decade, um, the, the VMware Partner Network evolving to become the VMware Partner Connect program. So we announced three weeks ago um, to our most strategic partners the introduction of that one program framework offering simplicity and choice to focus on their customers rather than how we've asked them to engage based on how we're aligned often internally by business unit or route to market. And the reception's really just been incredible. The other thing that uh, partners want, and I hear this a lot from uh, friend, my friends that are in the business own, own a bunch of firms, hey, what's in it for me? Yeah. I need to make some cash. So That's right. I need simplicity, I don't need a lot of high cost of sales. That's right. And, if I, and I want to have high margins on what we're doing, but also I want to wrap services around it. Clearly. How are you guys helping that scenario? Yeah, really in multiple ways. I think for, for VMware, as we look at the opportunity, and you know, I know you guys had a chance to catch up with Pat, and we've got some really bold statements of where we want to grow the business in the coming years together with our partners. I mean, it's a pretty powerful position to say, we want to double the business together with you uh, in the next three to five years. We want to go from 5% of revenue delivered through SaaS and subscription to 20% together with our partners. And that's going to come through a vibrant and committed partner ecosystem. And that vibrancy as we go forward is really going to be in the way that partners differentiate based on their skill sets and capabilities rather than um, program tiers, names, and brands. So I'll, I'll give you an example. We've had the opportunity in this last year to introduce our master services competencies. Really industry best of breed um, recognition of where partners are unlocking value for their customers, right? So whether they're driving data center virtualization, network virtualization, or uh, desktop and mobility, we now have the ability to say to our field, to our services organization, and most importantly to customers, here is the partner that is going to drive and deliver on the transformation through for the partner, margin-rich services opportunities. And again, you know, in, in a lot of these conversations uh, with our partners, as they're making that change and tra transition, many of them from traditional resale business models to cloud, a lot of the services opportunity is really delivering uh, most so, of the profitability. So part of that transition, uh, you just mentioned, is it's quadrupling the subscription component. Correct. How are you dealing with the the obvious challenge of how you compensate for that. Um, yeah. what, a lot of, what a lot of SaaS companies will do is say, yeah, yeah, SaaS, pay by the drink, and it's like, but That's you got to right. sign up for three years. <laughs> and so, That's exactly right. And so, so it's really not cloud. But so how are you dealing with that challenge and how is, how are the channel, how is the channel absorbing it? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, you know, if we look at the economics of the relationship in the past, it's been really focused on the initial transaction. But that transaction in the cloud world it, it, it means it is an important milestone along the customer journey, but it's only the initial step, right? In this try, buy, proof of concept life cycle, we've got to do a better job of taking our investment envelope and wallet and spreading that across the customer journey, looking at monthly recurring revenue, looking at the ways that our, our partners are unlocking value and driving consumption. So, Moving it from the initial uh, transaction to deployment, consumption, and expand opportunities with our customers, it's going to add tremendous value to the equation. So you got a new playbook. Things are changing. That's right. How you got here is not how you're going to move forward. Whole Literally. new ball game. What kinds of mechanisms are you guys going to put in place? Because you, know, you guys had, you know, Trenel has tried and true programs. Soft dollars, training. You got to get the word out. That's right. You got to watch the journey, so you got to instrument that. That's right. What are some of the things you guys are doing to, to be new and be fast and be relevant? No, it's a great question. I mean, a lot of it comes down to the evangelism, and, and I'd say, frankly, doing a better job of listening to our partners. So, we've had the advantage through VMware Partner Connect, uh, through our partner advisory boards and councils, doing the listening along the way to say that this is a program that not only is VMware building, but this is the co-investment and co-building together with our partners. So from inception uh, to design and concept and ultimately to the announcement and rollout, we've had our partners you know, hip to hip with us in this rollout. We'll certainly look to um, leverage opportunities like VMworld, hopefully we'll see you guys there. We'll definitely be there. We'll see you guys there uh, to amplify that message. But the key piece, and this is what our partners tell us is, help me leverage uh, the investments I've made in my VMware relationship today, but position me for the opportunities ahead. Give me a sense of where do I need to invest, sometimes ahead of the curve to make sure I'm taking advantage and of the program. And are you guys funded for that right now? Is Pat getting behind this with actual cash to get the prime the pump here? What's the, what's the update there? This is uh, from Pat and e-staff on down, a commitment for the organization. Uh, Brandon Sweeney, Maurizio Carli, everyone's really rallied around this. It's one of our top priorities. You know, Pat wants to ensure that we've got that vibrant, committed partner ecosystem that is bringing incremental value to our customer relationships, and we're putting the money uh, behind the, the commitment. You got to get the community action going, got to get some content. 
doing a great job right here. Qu question on the customer piece, I want to just yeah. shift gears because at the end of the day, you're, it's an indirect channel ultimately for VMware, but That's right. you're going to get deep in and enable your partners to be successful. They then have to think about your customer too, their customer, Correct. the joint customer. How has that world changed? As we were talking before we came on camera that with the um, VMware Cloud Foundation and all the now bundling that's going on and all the integration, you got a tight relationship with Dell Technologies as well as other partners. There's a lot of cross cross-wired programs. That's right. So who gets credit for what? So I, there's some complexity there, but ultimately it's an opportunity for the partner, your yeah. customers, and then their customer, to actually be a cloud service provider. That's right. A whole new generation to take away the system integration challenges that Correct. customers want to get rid of. That's right. Yeah, I mean, for us, I, I think it really comes down to being disruptive by being radically simple, right? Really boiling it down, and you talk about the, the relationship, there's some great announcements this week around the Dell Technologies Partner Program uh, change and evolution, and one of our partners, as well as our customers, frankly, have been asking us is, make it easier for us to do business across the full Dell Technologies family, right? All of the strategically aligned businesses, so whether you look at our VMware Cloud on um, you know, Dell EMC, VxRail, on any number of the engineered solutions that we're bringing to market, it's about now, adding value to the customer, simplifying the engagement, and really, again, driving the profitability for our partners. I think being agile, Rich, is going to be key for success for you, and, and making sure that the, it's funded and that the money's going into the partners. That's right. Um, in, the, in the gas tank to get them to go faster. Clearly, and we feel like we have one of the richest pr uh, programs in the industry that's really driving incremental value for our partners. And I think what you'll see us do is, again, a better job of differentiating the partners that are um, certainly co-investing in VMware, but most importantly, and this is what we hear from our customers, is invest in the partners that have demonstrated the ability to unlock value uh, in those well, engagements. Well, thanks for sharing the insight. We love this topic. I know it's kind of like a channel thing, but it's becoming a very key part for creating value. That's right. And also delivering a simple solution for customers. Um, give a quick plug for what's going on at VMware. Also, you mentioned VMworld. That's right. What, when, when, how do you guys run your partner programs, events? What's on, the, what's on the schedule? Take a quick minute to give a quick plug. Yeah, we've got a few opportunities ahead of us. Um, we're really excited to continue the success around our VMware Empower events where we bring both sales and technical um, and, um, enablement conversations to our partners. Certainly VMworld to be able to- What is that event, the one? Yeah, Empower coming up in Lisbon. Um, so really excited uh, towards the end of May. Uh, VMworld uh, in the U.S. as well as in EMEA. Um, and what co-locate an event within VMworld? Yes, we also do our distribution advisory board, our partner advisory boards, trying to add as much value, but also, again, do a good job of listening to our partners. Great. Rich, thanks for coming on, appreciate it. We'll be following all, we'll be following the money. And that's <laughs> at the end of the day, success is where people exchange the value, you guys are doing a great job. We're bringing you all the CUBE content here, day three, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John with Dave Vellante. Stay with us for more after this short break.